And that was funny.
That was funny. I mean, it's so easy. Like, yeah, there's going to be a 30-page long one, which is number six, chapter six. Oh, crap. I might have to read that this week. Gosh dang it, man. Okay, we need to see how long it really is. So, 54. What? What? Okay, what on earth? What? What is all this stuff down here? I mean, I could probably gotta read some of it. What do you mean audio clips? Do I need audio clips? Dang, I might have to read all this stuff. So look at all this stuff, man. Look at all this. What is this? I'm gonna have to at least look at it. Anyways. How long will this take?
Wait a minute. This is long. Wait. 45 to 49. Okay, no, it's not. Why did I think that was long? Um, yeah. Um, okay, but has anybody considered the fact that the, the conversations can be taped? Recorded? Like what the heck? Why don't why why isn't it that if any time an auditor and the client has an auto oral conversation, why don't they just record it on tape so that they don't? Okay, whatever. The, um, test control. I mean, they that could be done. Carol Mitchell, a supervising senior auditor with the CPA firm of Abernathy and Chapman, has been assigned to the Lakeside Company engagement. Her primary responsibility is evidence gathering in connection with the examination of financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2012. One of the audit areas that concern Mitchell is the accounts receivable balance generated by the distributorship side of the company on December 31st, 2011. This account made up 20% of the client's total assets. And analytical procedures applied to the September 30, 2012 trial balance revealed several ominous signs relating to the current receivables in the distributor side of the business. The average age of the outstanding accounts had jumped from 43.8 days at September 30, 2011 to 53.0 days as of the present September 30, since the company sells to its customers on terms of 210. <laughs> Um, at 45, this, <coughs> this calculation indicated to Mitchell that the average balance was presently overdue. In addition, the company's write-off of accounts had increased dramatically for the first nine months of 2011. Only 10,600 receivables were judged to be bad, while 28,300 were considered uncollectible during the same period in 2012. Consequently, she viewed the, the inherent risk in this area to be quite high. In the latter part of October, Mitchell discussed her findings to date with Dan Fine and Wallace Andrews, audit partner and audit manager for the engagement. At that meeting, Mitchell outlined the critical areas as she perceived them within the lakeside examination. She also reminded Klein and Andrews of the initial brainstorming meeting and several potential issues identified. She indicated that one of these potential problems was the company's accounts receivable. Because of her concern, Mitchell spent considerable time reviewing with Klein and Andrews the revenue and cash receipts cycle. All three were aware that receivables provide special opportunities for fraud including theft and the reporting of fictitious sales. Because of the high level of inherent risk for receivables, clients suggested that further testing be done in hopes of reducing the control risk initially assessed in this area. Otherwise, a considerable amount of substantive testing would be required of the audit team. Um, consequently, Mitchell was assigned to perform extensive testing to determine if adequate control
was assigned to perform extensive testing to determine if adequate control procedures and policies exist and are operating effectively. Once this test of controls is finished, a decision can be reached as to the amount of substantive testing that is necessary and whether or not substantive procedures such as confirming accounts receivable can be done on an interim basis. Klein also asked Mitchell to consider possible internal control improvements that could be recommended to Lakeside. Benjamin Rogers, the president of the company, had indicated that he wanted the systems to improve as the organization grew. Klein was well aware that relations with the client would be improved if the audit firm could propose viable enhancements to the company's controls. Finally, at the same meeting, the audit team decided that the existence of some of the accounts receivable balances could, would be confirmed directly with the Lakeside customers. Andrews suggested that interim balances as of November 30th, 2012, instead of final balances as of December 31st, 2012, be confirmed unless severe internal control problems were encountered. The decision as to whether confirmations should be positive or negative, along with the specific number of accounts to be confirmed, was left to Mitchell's judgment. Subject to the approval of Klein and Andrews, Mitchell began her evaluation of internal control by identifying the control procedures incorporated within Lakeside's revenue and cash receipts cycle. <laughs> I'm just thinking about how the professor was like, I have some good news and people are like people are like I'm afraid it's not going to be good news and it, and then he's and then the good news was that he decided that we wouldn't have to do our audit project which is so awesome um we originally were going to have to literally go to a, an actual business and do some kind of non-financial audit or not not do an audit but like just do something like I don't know not do it all but do whatever but he decided that instead of that we could just watch a episode of a show right is it just one episode of a show and then write something about the internal control that was or whatever and also well not write but do give a presentation well i don't know if we have do we have to turn written anyways it's easier okay that was funny mitchell begin her evaluation of internal control by identifying the control procedures incorporated within the lake size revenue and cash receipts cycle see exhibits four three and four four <sighs> These systems record both the increases and decreases made to accounts receivable. In her opinion, a number of the procedures appear to be well designed for a company the size of Lakeside, but several problems do exist. For example, no separate credit and collection departments are maintained. Also, the limited size of the company staff reduces the number of opportunities that are available for dividing responsibility. She began testing the specific control policies and procedures by seeking information that would enable her to answer control questionnaires such as the one presented in Exhibit 5.1. The CPA firm had designed each questionnaire 
with potential control problems in mind. Control anticipated being able to complete each of these documents after a series of conferences with Lakeside employees. On November 3rd, 2012, Mitchell visited the Lakeside headquarters to discuss internal control matters with several responsible officials. Her first conversation was with George Miller, assistant to the president. Here is the question and answer. Who has access to the accounts receivable? Subsidiary ledger. I do since I maintain the ledger, but in our company, all records are really open. I imagine that anyone who needed information can come in and look at them. How often do you age the accounts receivable? Only at the end of the year. However, I can easily review a specific account and determine its age at any time I want. Is the subsidiary ledger ever tested by anyone else within the Lakeside organization? What does that even mean? What do you mean? The independent auditors examine at least once a year. No other testing would seem necessary. If a customer complains that an invoice is incorrect, who is responsible for investigating the matter? The treasurer's office opens all mail. They have been directed to send any such complaints to me. I pull the sales invoices from my file and see what the trouble is. I personally get in touch with the customers to settle the problem. How do you verify credit approval? The sales representative's file reports file reports providing credit data gathered by potential clients. Rogers reviews this information and sets a maximum credit figure. If the account ever becomes overdue or if the customer exceeds this limit, further shipments are halted unless approval is made by Rogers. How often does uh, Rogers approve a sale to such customers? I really do not know. The invoice goes directly from Rogers to the sales division. How are the company's sales representatives paid? On a percentage commission based on their total sales, is any subsequent review made of the, these credit reports? No. If payment is made, the company is considered a good credit risk. Any customer that does not pay is a bad risk. Sales have risen. Has Lakeside's credit policy been eased recently? Not really. The sales representatives are excellent. They have been building a good group of new customers. The average age of accounts receivable in the distributor side of the company has increased to over 53 days, which means that the average account is currently overdue. Why is that? The stores that sell Cypress products The stores that sell Cypress products are stocking up prior to Christmas. Sales are a little slow for them right now. So their payments are sometimes delayed. Our collections will be just fine again. Right after the Christmas rush, why have so many receivables been written off this year? I am not sure. We may have been holding on to some accounts in hopes of collecting. Of course, we are also selling more. We probably generate more bad debts. How do you determine bad debt expense? We estimate our uncollectible accounts at the end of each year based on 0.7% of net credit sales made by the distributorship. How did Lakeside arrive at 0.7%? I don't know. I think we have always used that figure. <laughs> How is the decision made as to which specific accounts will actually be written off as uncollectible? After 60 days without payment, the sales division pulls its copy of the sales invoice and rebills the customer. 
Thirty days later, a third bill is mailed, and the sales division notifies me. I contact the sales representative, who then puts pressure on the customer. Con subsequently, the sales representative reports directly to me concerning the concerning possible payment. Based on this information, I make the decision as to whether the account is collectible, unless an obvious problem exists. Then you don't even think about writing off balances until they are five or six months old. Does the sales division send any invoices? After the third one is mailed at 90 days, no, any further billing is done by me. Does Rogers or anyone else at Lakeside verify the specific receivables that are deemed uncollectible? No, although Rogers has instructed me to remove companies from the credit list. When their balance becomes five months old, obviously no further sales are made to these customers until payment is received. Auditor, can inventory possibly be shipped to a customer without prior credit approval? No, either Rogers or I must initial the sales invoice and return it to the sales division. Without those initials, the inventory department is not allowed to process the order. Does anyone verify that the invoices are correct as to prices, goods, extensions, etc.? The sales division rechecks quantities and descriptions. I verify the prices and extensions when I receive my copy of the sales invoice. Unfortunately, by the time I get around to extending and pricing, the invoices are already out to the customers. On several occasions, we have had to rebuild a customer when I discovered an error. Could a sale be made and the invoice get lost or just be not or just not be prepared so that the customer never gets billed? Certainly hope not. Approved sales invoices are filed in the sales division. If the bill of lading never shows up, that division will eventually check into the shipment. Subsequently, the sales division retains a copy of the complete sales invoice. I receive a copy and the controller gets a copy. If one of these copies were to get lost, the other two departments would follow up on the matter. What verification is made of the cash discounts that are taken by customers? We are very tough on that issue. Our sales department recalculates all discounts. They allow credit only if deserved. If a company owes us $1,000 and pays $980, then $20 is still due unless the terms of the discount have been met. I would like to get an aged schedule of your accounts receivable as of November 30th. Will that be possible? It is certainly inconvenient, but I imagine we can get that done. After talking with Miller, Carol Mitchell prepared a program to test transaction details. As well as the effectiveness of the control procedures in the revenue and cash receipt cycle. The steps in this program are presented in Exhibit 5-2. Oh, oh, oh. Man, I don't want to read all this.
I could just go ahead and read chapter six. Nah. Oh my gosh. 